Psalms chapter 58 to the chief musician al Tithicuth, which means destroy not. A Mitchum, which is a prayer of David. Do you indeed speak righteousness, O congregation? <laughs> That'd be a question to put on churches today. Do you indeed speak righteousness? Don't you just love how that team passed the ball and blah, 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 blah? How many times, you know, he went around that lap and, and did you see that TV program last night? And that righteousness? Aren't we a congregation? It's funny how all the cults have stole, stolen the true names of, of Jesus Christ, the church, congregation, church of Christ. Do ye judge uprightly? Paul says you're not to take a, a Christian to, to court before the unsaved, before the unbelievers. When was the last time you had a court in a church when two Christians had a problem with each other? No, you get Christians to take the church and take other Christians to court. In fact, Paul even writes there in, in Corinthians that, you know what, just suffer the loss. O ye sons of men. This, that goes to general. It doesn't say Israel, it says sons of men. Yea, in heart ye work right, wickedness. There's that heart again. For a man says in his heart, there's no God. Jesus knew their hearts. You draw nigh with your mouths and your ears, but your heart is far from me. He told Ezekiel, he said, no, you're a lovely song, but their heart is not with you. They don't do the word. From Genesis 1 to, to Psalms 58, if you follow the, these, these sessions, I hope you learn by now that the problem with man is not head. It's a heart condition. You're wasting your money on shrinks, especially those that are saved. And there is a psychological problem. It should be just enough. A, a regular doctor should be able to uh, diagnose. Listen, all a shrink does is sit down and, and you char and he, he charges you to talk. And not one will ever offer anything good advice. They will question you on what you think is good. The only thing he'll give you is a bottle of pills. I've been through all that mess. You weigh the violence of your hands in the earth. And the earth is full of violence. As I'm going through Fox's Book of Martyrs, I'm just wondering how much blood has been spilled. And I read yesterday that upon this island of, of Crete, or some uh, area there, where massive amount of blood of, of Christians have been slain. And the thing I thought in my head, I was wondering, if you were to go over there today, are there any crops? Is there any plantation? Is there any vegetation where, those, where that blood has been shed? Because the Bible speaks for all generations and all classes. Of people. If a man murders a man, his blood shall be shed. How much blood has not been uh, uh, accounted for for the bloodshed? America is full of violence. It is full of blood of people who have been killed and people are sitting in a jail. America is full of violence in sodomite marriages and ordaining sodomites in the, in the, in the churches. America is full of violence. You know how many religions and occults have come out of America? The morons, the Jehovah Witnesses, the ASV, the Good News, the, the, the Living Bible, 
and the RSV, the NIV, have all come from America. Violence. The wicked are estranged from the womb, withdrawn, alienated. Not birth, in the womb. The foreknowledge of God. He knew what Pharaoh would do. He wasn't predetermined. Pharaoh had a pre had a free free will. But God knew from the womb of that child what that that man would do later on. Even the, the story of Samson from the womb that God told his mother, no vine. Either eat or drink. But God knew what Samson was going to be like. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. So in the womb, they're, they're alienated from doing right. And as soon as they're born, they speak lies. You know every baby speaks a lie? Even a baby that can't talk? A baby will cry when there's no poo-poo, no wetness, or it's not hungry. It'll just cry. Okay, I'm just going to... Oh, wait a minute. If I, if I start these tears, one of them, those, those big people will come and take care of me and hold me. So if I go, wah... Someone's going to come running. And I have heard some mothers and grandmothers say, in some cases with the child, just let them cry. And I've heard other people, oh, that's just cruel. No, in some cases that kid is, is, is lying to you. Yes, it may be wet, it may be soiled, it may be hungry. In other cases, what else? When you give him the bottle and you check his temperature, he's not sick, he doesn't. He has a clean diaper, what, what is those cries? I want attention. We've got a baby in the White House who, if you don't do it my way, I'm going to still do it my way. And then give a whole entire speech to this country and it's just loaded with lies. As I see what he spoke to last night, everybody give documented proof on what he said was wrong, and he hasn't got a clue. Their poison? Oh, lies is speaking of his poison. He ever told a lie? The Bible, the Holy Spirit, counts it as poison. Do you know what a modern Bible is? It's a lie. You know what it is? It's poison. Let's read on. It's like the poison of a serpent. There is your modern Bible. Matthew 3, 7, Deuteronomy 23, is a reference. The serpent is Satan. Genesis 3, Revelation 12. John 8.44 says that, that Satan is the father of lies. He is the author of lies. You know when you, t when you lie, and I'm talking to Christians, you have taken on the serpent. You know what the you know what the serpent did in Genesis three to prove that this is a modern Bible? Seven eighths of his message was right, one eighth was wrong. In those modern Bibles, you do have the word of God, and then you got the how much is the word of man and the word of Satan? They are like the death adder, which is a snake. That stoppeth her ear. Why? Which will not hearken to the voice of charmers. Charming never so wisely. That guy would be sitting there playing that fruit or whatever, that, 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 that pipe instrument. And the other's like, I can't hear you. You ain't going to charm me. And when I'm ready to bite, I'm going to bite. You're not going to soothe me with the, with the music. Now, now what, who's that a picture of? 
David and King Saul. When he played the music, oh, the, the, the devil that God gave unto Saul. Oh, I feel so good now. Oh. What is it? M music will, will charm the savage beast? Better not mess with lies. You are in Satan's realm. Learn and know John 8, 44. You know who the biggest next liar was after Satan? Eve. She added, subtracted, and, well, she didn't footnote. That's what they do today. The Word of God. Break their teeth. Can I tell you what the secret is of the snake charmers in India? Do you know there's a secret to it? If you were to go watch them and you do, 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 do that snake, they break the teeth of the snake. So if they do get bit, there's nothing there to bite them. Number two, they uh, uh, starve them to death. So they'll have no energy. That's the secret of St. Charmers. But break their teeth, oh God, not man. In their mouth. Break out the great teeth of the young lions. Oh, there's another reference to Satan. Oh, Lord. A liar has a poison of a snake and teeth of a lion. You better not lie. You better not ever lie. Christian. And you want you want to stop lying? Remember we talked about last night? It's not the head, it's your heart. You better pray to God. Say, God, I got a lying mouth. I need to be stopped. I'll tell you another thing you do with the Lord's help. The person you lied to, you go to that person and say, you know what? I lied to you. Oh boy, does that put the that, that puts you in humility. That puts you down. That puts the flesh in the grave. The flesh won't like when you go to the person and say, I lied to you. You ain't gonna find it in Capitol Hill and you ain't gonna find it in seven eight seven eighths of the used car or any car salesman out there. You need to pray to God, you need to seek God, and you need to take that lie. Doesn't the Bible say that if you have offended a brother, you're to, before you offer your offering, you're to go to that brother and make it right? That means you go to the guy and say, I lied. Now, I'm not going to talk about the world. I'm going to talk about Christians. And if I was going to talk to the world, I'd say about the movie scripts and all that. You know, I love you, I love you, and that's a lie. But I'm not going to go into movies and TVs like that. I'm going to go with a Christian. How about a guy gets up in the pulpit and says, well, the Word of God says, and he quotes a modern Bible. You're a liar! Well, it says, truly, truly. No, it says, verily, verily. Well, th this is this kind of music and not that kind. No, it's that kind of music. Just don't give it a new name. There are churches out there that call themselves Baptist churches and they're lying. There are preachers out there that say, we're King James. You're lying. There are Christians that will lie to you. They make themselves up, put their little bas uh, Baptist mask on, walk in the church. Out. Aren't we so great? In six days of the week, they live like the devil. You look in the, envelope, in the offering box and you see the envelopes. Oh, that, that envelope may be empty. I have been told when you, in certain churches, you go there, all eyes closed, all heads bow. I see that hand. 
And you know what? I've been in a church where I where I see that hand. I'm like, I look. Every once in a while, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going to test that pastor. I look, and I did not see a hand. I thank God we're not in that church no more. I think Brother Knox told me about that one. He sat there in the back of the platform and heard the pastor say, I see that hand. And the pastor's like, well, Pastor Knox's like, well, what, what hand? I don't see no hand. How about lies that the pastors will get there and tell you, well, to be baptized to be saved. That's a lie. That's a lie from hell. That's a lie of Satan. Let them melt away as waters which run continually. The liars. Let them go down the stream. Let, let them end up in the ocean. It's up the creek without a paddle. Everything washes down. Get them out of here. When he bendeth his bow to shoot his arrows, let them be as Cut in pieces. In other words, when he's going to fight, he's going to defend himself or he's going to attack. Let those arrows be like they're broken. You can't use a broken arrow. Impossible. As a snail which melteth. Now the snail does not melt. When you look at a snail, you see that little trail. It looks like it's melting. But he's not. And it's using as an illustration. You know, you look at this thing. Let every one of them pass away. But David's trying to say, if it were possible, it's not. Eventually that snail, he would just melt to nothing. Well, let them be like that. Let, the, let them start off and just slowly... Fade into nothing and never know nothing again. Like a snowman. That just melts away. And then one day he's just a puddle of water. Like the untimely birth. Wait, let, uh, as a snail which melted, let every one of them pass away. Just be dead. That's what it means. Let the... Like the uh, like the untimely birth of a woman. Death before life. Death before the world. I, I, I don't know how to say it. Because I, I believe uh, uh, a child in the womb is life. I, I don't know how, how to express what I'm trying to say and not say that that life in the womb is not life, but premature death. <laughs> Before you can do anything, I guess you can say. That they may not see the sun. An untimely birth of, of, a, of a child in a womb that cannot see, th th there's no substance. There's nothing to be judged. All have sinned and come to show the glory of God, but children that are, are killed or die and, and like that, well, they're not going to be charged with sin. And that's a whole long subject to get into, which we're not getting into. But David's saying, rather have them die in a womb than be charged with all the lying. Job said, I'd rather die from the womb to escape all the pain and sorrow I'm going through. And David's saying here, rather have died in a womb that you will not have all these things. And that brings you to a remarkable thing with God. And the question is, and this is only one answer of I don't know how many. Why did God take the child so young? Five. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 years old. Why did they die at such a young age? 
And you've got to answer that with one answer, and there's many. God knew what that child would do for sins, according using Psalm 58 tonight. And their death, be it as early as it is in their life, God knows that they will be wicked. When that man was committing fornication in, in the Corinthian church, David, uh, uh, saw, Paul said, I am going to turn her over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh. What Paul was doing is saying, listen, let Satan kill that guy right now if he will not repent. Because if he doesn't kill him right now, if he doesn't or is not going to repent, he's going to suffer a lot more sins and it's going to be at the judgment seat of Christ. Sometimes it's God's mercy that he takes someone in a young life because let them die now in their sins where later on there would be a lot more sins. Sometimes it's a merciful act. They're going to have things that are going to burn up at the judgment seat of Christ, but a lot better than a little pile than a big pile of ashes if God has them keep going. Now that's just one of many. And I'm doing it with, with 58 as talking about liars that David wants it to stop. That these men would have been better had they not been born than to be the liars. Because these men are going to stand before the great white throne judgment. And God is going to call out every single lie. So when a Christian gets into a Christian movie and his name is George. And in the movie his name is Fred. He is lying. And in real life, if he's a policeman, and, and on the film he's a preacher, he is lying. And if his wife is Phyllis, and in the movie his wife is another woman, and her name is Linda, he is lying. And I'm not talking about Hollywood. I'm talking about Christians. And then when he tells that woman that's not his wife, it is not the name of his wife, and he says, I love you in the movie, he is lying. It had been better for that guy to die in the womb than to all the judgment he's going to face at the judgment seat of Christ. That entire movie script, and yes, I'm against Christian movies, that entire script that that guy has been involved in, and everybody in that movie is going to be laid out before Jesus Christ, is going to be tried by fire, is going to be wood, hay, or stubble, and he's going to be called a liar. They have been better for that guy had never been born. I'll tell you another lie out there. That's in the churches. Just say this prayer and you'll be saved. That is a lie. And how many people will Jesus say, I never knew you, depart from me, ye workers in iniquity, when they get cast into hell, thinking they are saved, and you be found a liar. It'd be better for God to break your teeth and you won't be able to speak. Because you've got the great teeth of a lion, Satan. I'll tell you another lie a Christian will tell another Christian. I'll pray for you. And then never, ever utters a prayer for that person. I'll tell you another lie a Christian will do. He'll get in his songbook, open up his songbook, sweet hour of prayers, never pray. Oh, I love to tell the story. And you don't tell anybody. Victory in Jesus. And your life is anything but victory because you won't live right. Hold the fort for I am coming and you don't fight. I believe that the songs that you sing in the church house, if you don't live right, you're going to be condemned. 
You're going to suffer loss by the by the hymns that you sing when you should have done right. It's amazing. Before your pots can feel the thorns. I've heard it explained as cleaning and uh, the thorns that are set on fire. You know, when you put the pot on it, thorns were used to burn. Before you can put that pot, he shall take, away, take them away as the whirlwind. Now, you may know someone who's a liar. And you say, well, Lord, that guy's wicked. He's a liar, and you have not taken him away. Now, I know some Christians out there, and they got one person in mind. But let me ask you. 4,000 years Old Testament, 2,000 years New Testament. Let's say 80 years. Let's just pick around number 80. What is 80 years compared to, to 6,000 years? What is that? What is 80 years compared to eternity before, 6,000 years now, and eternity hereafter? There's not even a word. Microscopic doesn't even do it. God will take them away. Every liar will, will die. Everyone will die. For the wages of sin is death. And Revelation 21 and 22 says the liars shall have their part in hell. They're not going to be in New Jerusalem. They're not going to be in the New Earth. They're not going to be in the New, new Heavens. Don't worry. God will take care of them even if they live 120 years old. You know why they live a longer life than we see? Why would a liar live longer than a saved Christian? I got one word. God's long-suffering. God is not willing that any perish. God will give a sinner, a wicked lost man that's bound for hell, will give him age and time to get him saved. And will be to him if he lives 120 years of God's mercy and God's grace and God's long suffering and still reject the way, the truth, and the light. You know, I think that will be at the, at the great white throne judgment. I gave you 20 extra years, more than this guy who loved me, who had a good church. Listen, there are pastors I've heard stories. They, they started a brand new work. They love the Lord. They're, they're excited. They preach right. They're in the right Bible. They train the, the, their people to go out and witness and tell them about Jesus and die within two years that church started. And some wicked, nasty, perverted sinner lives to 110 years old. Well, maybe not 110, but 100 years old. Why is that? Reason number two of many. God's long-suffering. That preacher has already said, maybe God, I don't know, we say maybe God wants him in the company. God knows. But for a reason for a wicked sinner to keep on living is God's long-suffering for him to, to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ before he goes off into eternity. He shall take them away as the whirlwind. Job's children were taken away in the whirlwind and then resurrected. Now, am I suggesting that Job? No, I'm not. I'm just saying. In the Bible, whirlwind did take lives. Now, am I saying every tornado that, you know, take? No. But a whirlwind can be used by God to take away sinners. And the way we are in this country right now, I'll be so bold to tell you, if you get people that died in a whirlwind, I would say in a, in a lot of people, at least one or very few would be saved Christians. And that it would be the judgment of God if any lost man was, was killed in a whirlwind, in a tornado. Why would you say that? Psalm 58, verse 9. It's a judgment of God. Yeah, God's long-suffering, but if you fill that cup up and starts overflowing, then the judgment of God needs to come upon you. I 
Remember we said to, to John and James about the cup. Yeah, Lord, we were able to take that cup. That cup was death. It was a violent death. All but John. Both living and in his wrath. The wrath of God. Tornadoes are a wrath of God. Or of Satan. Job chapter 1. How about that one? Bible has a lot of things, doesn't it? But the wicked people we're talking about here are liars. One whirlwind would take care of the, the government of this country. But why hasn't God done it? Well, two reasons. Long-suffering. And it would please a lot of Christians. If Washington, D.C., with all the politicians, blew up tomorrow morning or afternoon, I'm talking about everybody that's in politics died, you would hear such a roar and such a, a glad tidings from the Christians, and that would make God sick. That would defy the Bible when the Bible says you're to pray for your enemies and you're to pay your taxes. And President Obama is nowhere near compared to Nero. The righteous, okay, shall rejoice when he sees vengeance. You say, ah, so see, if Washington, D.C., I will rejoice. Are you righteous? Oh, yeah. You mean you pray for all those enemies that you have out of your heart? <laughs> See? I'm not righteous. I'm a sinner saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. If there's any righteousness in me, it's God, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus. It's not me. Uh, the righteous I will be will be the day of the great white throne judgment when I have been judged at the judgment seat of Christ and made pure. My sins have been burned away that are left not under the blood and I'd be rewarded if I get any rewards when I'm standing <coughs> when I'm standing there in the holiness of Jesus Christ. And then when I see people getting put off into hell, then they'll be rejoiced. Rejoice because of people going to hell? We'll have a new heart. We'll have a new nature then. We will see them not as people who have sinned, but people who rejected your, your Savior, your Christ, your Jesus, who told God, your God, that I can do it my way. Deuteronomy 32, 35, Psalm 68, verse 28, Revelation 14, 18 to 26 will be he shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. That is the second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ. So what's going to happen? When Jesus Christ comes back at the second advent, we Christians, the righteous, are going to be rejoicing. Go get him, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Hold the fort, for we are coming. Don't tell me we're not going to be singing praises. Don't tell me we're not going to be singing marching songs. I don't think we're going to do any 7-Eleven songs. We are going to be rejoicing when we come back with Jesus. How's that? When how much of this population, this world is going to be destroyed by Jesus? After all the things that have gone on, the seven seals, the seven vials, uh, the three woes, and three trumpets, uh, seven trumpets. Then Jesus Christ coming back with a sword out of his mouth, with a rod. And what are you Christians going to be doing? We're going to be rejoicing. Not bringing in the sheaves. We've already brought them in. Taking care of the tares. 
rejoicing as we come, taking in the tares, binding them up, and cast them into the fire. Isn't that one of the parables? How about when Jesus separates the sheep from the from the goats? We'll be shouting hallelujah, praise the Lord, amen. Those are God's people over there, the sheep. Amen, we're here. Finally, there's peace in Jerusalem. Isn't that the prayer of Paul? Isn't that our, that's supposed to be our prayer? As we shout that the peace of Jerusalem has come, Jesus Christ is sitting on the throne. He's in David's seat. And from now for all eternity, he's going to sit there. Oh, too bad all those people who rejected him have been cast into the lake of fire. That's there on the earth. So that a man shall say, Verily there is a reward for the righteous. What's that? Jesus Christ has come. Verse 10. What is verse 11? When he separates the sheep from the goats. And what is their reward? Those are the sheep. They get to go in the millennium. How's that? You just saw the second advent of the millennium in two, two verses. Isn't that hunky dory great? After we got done with the liar. Oh, wait a minute. Who's a liar? Who's a liar? Who's a liar? John 8 44, Satan. Oh, so verses 1 through 9 is about the Antichrist. Tribulation, the liar. Verse 10, Jesus Christ comes back. And verse 11. Those that took care of the Jews get the reward. Verily, he is a God that judges in the earth, sitting on David's throne. Peace in Jerusalem. Our prayers have been answered. Now, you didn't know that verse was about the tribulation, Satan, and about the second coming and the, the millennial reign of Jesus Christ, did you? You didn't know about that. What was the title? Al Task forget for getting wrong. Destroy not. Well, who's the destroyer? What was the name of Apollyon? The destroyer? Ap Apollyon and Abanion? The destroyer. Destroy not. Get rid of them too. God, Jesus Christ, will get victory over the liar, John 8 44. And if you lie, you are likened as the Antichrist, as Satan. I'm talking to saved Christian. I ain't talking to no lost people. When you lie, you take on what Satan's characteristic, Satan's attribute. Lying is not of God. Now let me go over here and look real quick. I got a note here, back here somewhere. About God and lies. I hope I can find it real quick. Where my pages did. All right. God will not lie. Psalms eighty nine thirty five. Revelation twenty one twenty seven. First Samuel fifteen twenty nine. Numbers twenty three nineteen. Hebrews six eighteen. Titus 1 2 and Isaiah 65 16. You can slow this, this video down, you can get them. But those are the scriptures where God will not, cannot, and is not able to lie. And if you got the Holy Spirit inside you, which is God, you got God dwelling inside you, you got Jesus Christ dwelling in you, you are incapable of telling a lie. And when you do, you become Satan. What the scriptures say. First John 1 9, confess your sins unto the Lord Jesus Christ before God by the blood of the Lamb. The sinless Lamb of the blood and the precious blood of that Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. You need to stop lying.
Salvation's plan is just a fairy tale, but their lies don't change the truth that Jesus died for you, and the word says his returning could happen any day. I'm gonna shout it from the housetops, proclaim it from the mountaintops, tell the world. 